In a previous video, we found the general solution to the heat equation and boundary conditions given here, and the main question we had are what are the B sub n's, the unknown constants. And here we need initial conditions then in order to figure out what these constants are. So suppose that we have the initial conditions um, given by the initial temperature of the bar. Uh, say u of x comma 0, so at t equal to 0, is 10 sine of 2 pi x over L. That could be some initial temperature of the bar. Okay, so then that says that 10 sine of 2 pi x over L is equal to, uh, well, u at t equal to 0, and so we put t equal to 0 in our expression that we have here, so sum over b sub n sine of n pi x over L, and then e to the 0, which is just 1. Uh, and so now we stare at this and we say, how could we solve this? Well, apparently this means that b sub n is 10 if n is 2, and it's 0 if n is not equal to 2. That's one way we could solve this. In fact, it is the way we're going to solve this. To find our temperature at all times, we just have one term, 10 sine of 2 pi x over L, e to the minus alpha 4 pi squared over L squared t. 4 because we put n equal to 2, and that's an n squared up there. And what this looks like is there's some initial temperature profile here. And over time, that initial temperature profile decays from this exponential decay here. So if I were to graph that, it might look something like this. So at temperature as a function of x, I have my initial profile at t equal to 0. And then over time, it's going to look similar, just the amplitude is going to decay over time, approaching asymptotically approaching 0. Okay. So that's what our solution here has found for us, is that the temperature profile stays roughly the same, just decaying. More generally, let's say that our initial condition is some function of x, which could be any crazy function that you want. Um, well, not any crazy function that you want. It really should be 0 at the ends, since that's what our boundary conditions were. That tells us that that function is now equal to, well, the temperature at t equal to 0, which is the sum over b sub n sine of n pi x over L. And so we need to now solve this. Well, that's kind of nice. That's actually a Fourier series. That says we're going to match a function by a sum of sine terms. So we can find the b sub n using the usual kind of Fourier trick that you would do to solve a Fourier series. Let's just go through the details of that here. So first we're going to multiply both sides by sine of m pi x over L and integrate from 0 to L. So we do that on both sides. So we've integrated on the right-hand side now, b sub n sine of n pi x over L, sine of m pi x over L, where m is not necessarily the same as n. And then we look at the right-hand side, and the sum over b sub n can come out of the integral. So let's pull that out of the integral. And then now our integral is just from 0 to L, these two sine terms dx. But that's actually a nice looking integral. So if you do that integral, you'll find that you get L over 2 if the n value is equal to m value, or 0 if they're not equal to each other. Another way of writing this is we can write it as L over 2 times the Kronecker delta, delta mn, which means essentially the same thing. Okay, so now let's put that result in here. So we have the sum n equal to 1 to infinity, the b sub n, times L over 2 delta of mn. And on the left-hand side, we still have this integral of f of x sine of m pi x over L dx. Well, this infinite sum collapses down to just one term because, well, that's what the Kronecker delta is doing for you. It only picks out the term where n is equal to m in this infinite sum. And so now we can solve for the arbitrary constant, or the unknown constant, b sub n, and we get a result as 2 over L, integral from 0 to L, the function times sine of m pi x over L dx. And so if you want to find the solution, you just insert whatever your initial conditions and your initial profile function is here, 
calculate the b sub m, and now you can insert that into your infinite sum for the b sub n here, sine of n pi x over l, don't forget the exponential, minus alpha n squared pi squared over l squared t. And then you have your solution to your differential equation for a set of initial conditions, a set of boundary conditions to describe the temperature of a bar as a function of both position and time. So that's an example of how to use separation of variables for the heat equation.